Hello, and welcome back to the round 5 of the Legacy tournament here in, on Scandinavian Open. We are going to watch uh, Gustav Landelius and Niklas Olsson. Uh, Jau with, uh, Niklas Olsson. Jausis. Uh, Jausis. Uh, play Je Jeskai Stoneblade against Stefan Taxis. And, and they are already started. Yeah, and uh, Gustav looks like he's on the play here. And yeah. uh, just to inform you, this is then uh, <clears throat> not your typical blue, white, red Delver deck that has been quite popular. But th this is rather a more controlling build with cards like Grim Lava Monster, just a one of, four Stoneforge Mystic, three True Name Nemesis, <laughs> and uh, four Young Pyro Monsters as the main threats. That is really interesting. Like, it, you think that like Young Pyro Monster and Delver are these cards that go hand in hand. Best friends forever. Uh, but uh, he a actually opts to play just the Pyro Monster, which is really interesting. Mm -hmm. I guess you just have room for that much, and uh, True Name, uh, Stoneforge, and Grim Lava Monster are certainly very strong creatures. That's very true. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, Niklas, on the other hand, he's playing your typical Death and Taxes list. Yeah, I, I I looked through his list and I see nothing really out of the ordinary. It's it's just exactly what you could ex expect from a uh, different taxes list. Yeah, uh, I think one one thing which might be worth noting is that he's going for the more aggressive creatures, Sarah Avengers and two Mirren Crusaders. I know some people are want are shaving those slots for more disruptive creatures. Okay, like um, Avon Mind Sensor and cards like that. Okay, that, that is interesting. Uh, yeah, certainly, but uh, he, he just tries to put a... Th that should be really good in this matchup. To go for them, for the... Because disruptive creatures aren't as good against the fire decks. As, no. It's just the big bodies. Like Sarah Ser Vendor, for example. There is no creature in the in the Yeskai blade, the stone blade deck that uh, contests that mm -hmm. in uh, any, any way. Right, so we here we have a revoker from Niklas, and uh, I suppose it's naming Stoneforge, or would you not name Stoneforge because you're playing them yourself? Nah, it's with a Stoneforge out there. I I find uh, it very hard for him to name anything else but Stoneforge. Mm. Uh, but I think it's gonna get met by a lightning bolt. So uh, he... I'm not sure I, because I think uh, Gusa is tapping all those lands for. Oh, okay, we're in Gustav's turn. Yeah, My for bad. a true name. That is a very good card in the matchup. It in indeed is, because I think there are exactly zero outs they did. for Niklas. Exactly. The only the only way Niklas can get past this is by getting a Sword of Fire and Ice online yeah. and racing. But uh, there's no way of blocking it. And if that true name ever picks up an, an equipment, it is uh, very bad news for Niklas. Yeah, well, it, it, and that is like literally any equipment. It's mm -hmm. just absurd here. Like, a, an unblockable, untargetable creature. Yeah. That, that can also, worse comes to worse, it can just uh, stay back and on, uh, defense, yeah, on right. defense and like block everything. Right. And I, but I, and I also think this is actually perhaps the best possible start for Gustav here because uh, the other threats in his deck are very easily met as you mentioned yeah. by, the, by the threats in Niklas deck so this is just what Gustav wanted yeah he, he, was, he was seen Niklas he, he did draw the Sword of Fire and Ice so that is what he needed but I and it am, even uh, looks like it's resolving so that's a good, <laughs> a good start for him exactly always a plus when your spells resolve because uh, the Jeskai deck, of course, plays uh, for Brainstorm, uh, for Force of Will, pardon me, uh, but also Spell Pierce. So, uh, he, he was tapped out, so he couldn't play Spell Pierce that turn. That's true. Um, and that might actually have uh, incited Nicholas to just throw uh, it out uh, there. And... Uh, exactly, like, this, this is opportunity, please mm. don't have Force of Will. Right. Because now, that uh, Revoker will actually be able to start to get in there. Yes, it, it it seems like it. Although, uh, worth noting is that uh, the Revoker gets... It, it, it can get hit by any removal spell. Like, he it, right. it plays Lightning Bolts and Swords of Plowshares. And uh, yeah, it, that, that's it, but that is still like... Uh, it, it's seven cards that mm -hmm. could just really, really mm -hmm. wreck him if, yeah. he, if he would go for it. Yeah, Gustav is playing three, three Bolts and three Plows. Yeah, and there we see the Gitaxian Probe revealing... 
a not so exciting hand. Not that exciting. So we have a Mirren Crusader, uh, Sarah Avenger, uh, two Sarah Avengers, Stoneforge Mystic, and a Horizon Canopy. Yes. So what would you do with that? You also have a Plains and two Richdom ports in play. It's... Uh, next turn. I guess you have a pretty clean uh, equip the Sword of Fire and Ice and try to go for that. And mm -hmm. if that fails, you can play the Sarah Avenger mm -hmm. and uh, equip the Sword of Fire and Ice to that next turn. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think that is a fine line to take here. Uh, although I don't think it's a winning one since, you know, there is a, there's a true name with a uh, Ume coming mm -hmm. with, uh, coming in a, like any second now. Does Gustav have the Vegeta in hand? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's, he's started with the Stoneforge right. Mystic, so he, <coughs> so he knows about that. And beating that will be very problematic for, uh, for, for Nicholas. Yeah. I mean, one thing he could actually try to do now that the Stoneforges are turned off is to um, just go for Mana Denial on Gustav. Because he has two, oh. two Richdown ports. So say that he draws a Wasteland Yes. and wastes the Volcanic... And then he can upkeep tap uh, the tundra, I think it is. Oh right, and you just never let uh, let it connect the Yitta yeah. to the true name. Uh, that could certainly be a possibility, but to to make that happen, don't mm. you have to uh, also like you you have to equip your sword of fire and ice first? I I, I think mm. because attack for two per turn mana and using the mana denial. Mm. It's not like uh, no. It's a very s slow controlling play. Exactly. Uh, I I think I like this line a little bit better at yeah. the moment. But uh, like, let's say nothing. Nothing happens this turn. Like mm -hmm. in theory. Like at, at at this spot, I would definitely just go for like denying, mm -hmm. denying him on mana. Yeah, and especially because Gustav tapped out there, I think you have a excellent opportunity to just suit up your revoker. Uh, get immunity from lightning bolt. Yes. And uh, just start beating phase. Agreed. Uh, it seems like he won't be able to uh, play and equip uh, the Gita this turn. No, that's correct. But the question is if that Gita get, gets out there, then what is Nicholas' plan, really? Well, if there's no fourth land, he can just double tap with. Uh, uh, with the Rishana ports, uh, as you said, but uh, mm -hmm. there, there is the fourth land, yeah. and also, like at any point where he draws the fourth land, he can equip. So, I really know what the plan that here is. Or just just trying to race? I guess so. Oh, but Gusto plays another true name instead of the GT. That's interesting. It's certainly. So now they are just racing, it seems. And isn't this a race that... The, I, I guess Nicholas is on a two-turn clock. But how how fast is this clock? Like, he jump blocks with uh, Stoneforge this turn. Yeah. He takes three, goes down to 12, and but then if next he, turn... if he re-equips to the Sarah, he gets in for seven. Oh, right, that, that is correct. Gets in for, yeah, but getting in for seven here is... That's still... You still need one more damage somehow. Yeah. I don't really see the way you get that. Or suppose you hit for five here and shoot the Stoneforge, right? That's just what he's doing. Then you hit Gustav down to ten. And then next turn you can attack for nine. You're still missing one. Yeah. So he needs... Is there another sword in his deck? Uh, in his deck, no. The the equipments are he has the he has the Yeti himself. Mm -hmm. Oh, the, the Sarah Vendor uh, adds some more damage to the board. But oh yeah, that that's uh, lethal. Ne next yeah, turn. That, that is lethal next turn. But is it? It's not lethal if Gustav has another land and can equip the Jitta. Or if he, Gustav just has any removal. Oh, yeah, exactly. Any lightning bolt, any sword. any swords to closures. Also, yeah. two lightning bolts here is just game. Yeah. 
Or, but maybe doesn't have, he doesn't have red mana at this moment. No, because Niklas wasted his only red mana. Oh, he only had one red source. That is huge. Yeah. So now it's actually like Swords to Plowshares, a fourth land. Like, he still has a lot of outs, but mm -hmm. like now there is the possibility that Gustav actually doesn't have it. Right. And now I bet he wished he played that Jita. Yes. Although I think the line he took was solid to like yeah, which just is, uh, six a turn is really powerful. Just put Niklas on on that two, two turn clock and more or less say, do you have it? So there we have a dig through time. Oh, he is digging indeed. And it must be a sword he's digging for here, right? Yes, uh, but like with the dig through time is like. It feels more like a demonic, like a double demonic tutor. <laughs> like seven cards is so much. If you yeah. don't find, if you don't don't find a sword, or if you don't find a red source plus bolt, I don't know. Oh, but he was looking at some pretty bad. Yeah, cards. I, I saw you, you saw double force of will there. I think stone forge spell. A stone for spell there, there is a source of power shears there. Oh, okay, and but but actually there, there's a problem with the swords here which is that Nicholas gains life yeah and which then it's no longer on a two-turn clock exactly this this got to be a really exciting game like this is so close like in so many ways yeah because this is enjoyable so what do you do here then do you is that also a whiteboard lightning bolt I see there I think so but this could actually get really Tricky because suppose you take the swords to plowshares yes. and you intend to kill the guy with the sword mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because to save as much damage. Yeah, as exactly. Possible. What do you do as in Nicholas' shoes then? If if okay. if if, if suppose Gustav doesn't play a land here. Hmm. Oh, you could actually. You port the planes in your main phase. Exactly. And, and, then, and then, you can re then you can re equip to the other angel well, and still hit for seven. That's a good call. So we, let, let's see if Gustav chooses to hold the swords and if Niklas then sees this play. Yeah, it's definitely not a play I think that like every play would see. Very good, very good call there by you to see that play. But I think Niklas will actually see it because he has been. Niklas is a good friend but, but, of mine. But, but, so but is it lethal? It, no, it's, it's, no, it's not lethal. No, it's But not. it's... Uh, uh, yeah, 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 but right, yeah, he has the swords here yeah. and uh, you, you gain life. And I and I think Niklas will see this play. I mean, he, he, he hasn't played Magic for... He, he played back in the day, so to speak. But, oh, okay. But, yeah, but I, he picked up Magic quite recently. I mean, maybe two a year and a half ago or something. And he has been playing this deck a lot. But no, he just attacks. Oh my god. I... But, like... Is, couldn't this be lethal in two turns anyway? Yeah, at, at, at 10 life, like, he's taking 5 this turn. Yeah, I... I okay, so he gains 5, goes up to 11. And I, I actually like this play more, because I'm pretty sure that uh, Gustav is dead next turn anyway. And this... And this way you can deny some mana. I, I'm not sure I like it better, but I, I see the reason why Nicholas would do this. Mm. I mean, he might reason that he has so much to do with his mana anyways, so he's not really interested in drawing those extra cards. And yeah. as you said, this is also a, a, a two-turn clock. So that might be the reason. He just leaves the island up, which is a, which is great because then the, the Avenger can't get hit by a removal spell. But here we see we see a, another swords there. Yep, and the pyromancer. I don't think we have another land. No. So. Um, uh, but I, there is a ponder. Uh, I think I saw a ponder. Okay. Then uh, I'm not sure, but if it's a ponder, you can, uh, you can ponder into. Uh, into a white source mm -hmm. and use swords again. Mm. And that was the upkeep brainstorm, right? In response uh, to the yeah, plot. Yeah, ex exactly. He used the tundra to so cast the brainstorm. Hopefully he will remember to draw a card in his draw step. Yes, <laughs> that <laughs> would be a good thing. Um, Drawing your cards in your, car 
in your draw step is a very good first step to actually winning games of Magic. Right. Oh right, and he, and he big, and because he floated a white in his draw oh, step as well. Yeah. Or his upkeep, he could actually just kill that angel right away. Well, so, well played. All, yeah, well all, played. always float the mana. So now it's actually looking better for Gustav here. I, I'd, I'd say so. Uh, Nicholas is at 14, <laughs> from being at 6 to being yeah. at 14, uh, which is sad, but uh, he puts him to 11 here, mm -hmm. which means, uh, and leaves one back, which means that like they can both attack next turn. But now and the Revoker can just suit up and attack past that. I guess it can. So I, so I, then I don't really get why he, why he would leave one back. back, right. S say that you will. Wait, what? He is at five life. Isn't he is dead? Mm, yeah, he is. And I think Nikdas is trying to equip here, but. I'm not sure what Gustav could. Oh no, now he ports and then he uh, equips and attacks. I would and, love to see. And he scoops. Got shot in response to that equip. <laughs> Unfortunately, Gustav doesn't play Gutschatz. Yeah. <laughs> not in his main deck and not in his sideboard. So, uh, Nicholas takes the first game. And we actually talked a little bit uh, prior to this match mm -hmm. that we thought that uh, Gust uh, that I mean, Nicholas takes the first game. Uh, no, wait. Who, who? Nicholas takes the first game. Yeah, Nicholas takes over the first game. We, we think that Nicholas is a huge favorite in this matchup. Yeah. Death and Taxes are uh, known to prey on these Del Delver type decks. Mm -hmm. Even uh, if they do not actually play Delver. Uh, exactly. <laughs> this is like, uh, if, if you've been, uh, if you're a magic, magic player, you probably know how Delver decks look. Yeah. Uh, so, like, even if it doesn't have Delver. Uh, and I am, of course, one one huge reason for that is that if you look at Gustav's decklist, he plays a total of nineteen lands, yes, and only two basic lands, an island and a plains. And in uh, Nicholas' deck, we see Richard and ports four and four wasteland, right? Which is and Thalia, uh, exactly, and Thalia, which increases the cost of his, all all the spells. Like mm -hmm. after all, we, we mentioned all the creatures he plays, which mm -hmm. isn't that many. He's playing. Gustav is playing a total of uh, twelve creatures, mm -hmm. and you know what the rest of rest of those cards are? Those are spells. Non-creature uh, spells. Exactly, and Talia seems to not like those spells very much, so right. makes it really hard to cast them. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is also like Rex and Revoker to shut down the equipments and the lava monsters, like. Uh, like every card in uh, in Nicholas' deck just lines up in a very beautiful mm. way against uh, the Gustav's deck. Yeah, I'd say absolutely. I, I think Gustav will have to try have to do something pretty outstanding yeah. to uh, take down this. Series. Yeah, we are actually going to the sideboard. Is there some creative sideboard plan that uh, he could use to uh, win this matchup or turn I it mean, around in his favor? I think he has a pretty. Uh, um, a couple of creative sideboard choices, uh, mostly to Electricery. Yeah, I, I was looking I, at that as well. I, I could see those coming in here. Definitely, it's an answer to the, the turn one Mother Runes. Mm -hmm. It kills the Phyrexian Revoker, uh, also kills, uh, can kill like, and it can kill multiple of these. Mm -hmm. Also, Talia, there's one Spirit of the Labyrinth in this mm -hmm. deck. Yeah, there, are, um, there are a number of excellent ones. And, and, and also free Flicker Wisp. Like, yeah. how, how, how good value is that? So there's, uh, I think, uh, the electric risks are probably coming in. Mm. Uh, I think he will probably bring in the Supreme Verdict. He has one in his yeah. sideboard, but it's uh, very hard. It's very hard to cast uh, that card in this the, matchup. The problem with Supreme Verdict, I, I kind of think, is uh, either while. Mm. Like either while is uh, really terrible. Like if if you Supreme Verdict and they just like while in a Mirror Crusade yeah. end of turn, uh, uh, that that's just horrible mm. and nothing you want to do but uh, uh, and other than that he has yeah. two councils judgment you which think that card's good here i think uh, no but i think it's mm. an, it's a card he needs 
Yeah. Because uh, the game that won, uh, or the, the card that won Nicholas that game is uh, so, Sword of Fire 9. Yeah, that card was a beast that game. He just cast it on turn 3 yeah. and then just equipped it like the different creatures every time. Because uh, as, as long as, the, as there are no equipments on Nicholas' side of the board, uh, true name is uh, will be king of the board. Absolutely. So uh, I I think he has a good reason to bring in Council's Judgment, but I think he might. Uh, there are other cards you could have that sort of are perhaps better in this particular matchup. Yes. Uh, let's have a look at uh, Nicholas' sideboard. Right. Uh, I see. Um, I see one Sunlance that could come in. It deals with non-white creatures, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so Sunlands could... K- uh, it actually just kills the young Pyromancer and the Grim mm-hmm. Lava Monster, so probably not what it wants. Uh, we have Council's Judgment, which will... One one copy of it, which will definitely come in. Oh, yes. Uh, that is like the... That, 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 I think that card got printed just as an answer to True Name Nemesis. Like, that is the Pretty reason much. why they put it mm-hmm. there. Uh, we also... Other than that, I don't really know if there's anything else that is that interesting for him, or what do you think? I think he will bring in the Sunlands because, uh, you uh, think so? yeah, because he probably thinks he's playing as against oh, other exactly. just regular yeah. just guy Delver deck. Yeah, he, he doesn't know that uh, there are no the, Delvers. There are no Delvers in right. the Delver deck. <laughs> so he will. I think he will probably bring that one in. But mm-hmm. uh, no, as you said, I mean, he might bring in the one of Oblivion Ring. Uh, but no, I mean, uh, Council Judgment, Sunlands. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, as you said, his main decks matches up very well against the, the Delver decks. So. De- definitely. Uh, and th- they're on their way. Nicholas starts with a shot important in turn one, which is, in my opinion, a sign of weakness. Yeah. Uh, if you have a white source in turn one, and, uh, uh, and like, if it. If you don't have a while and a white source on turn one, you definitely play it. Mm-hmm. So this like kind of tells me that uh, Nicholas doesn't have a white source in hand. Yeah, and maybe that his hand is... Uh, I, I wonder what kind of hand he would have that would make him play I think on it, turn one. I think it would involve Revoker. Yeah, that uh, makes sense. And... Other than that... It has to be a very good hand bearing that I think he has true up planes. That would um, that would be good for him if what you if your guess was true. But I now was. we now we see that this is not your typical yeah, it, it, just guy deck he's playing against when uh, Gusa plays the Pyromancer. So exactly. That should that kind of throws a throws a curveball into into the game. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we see Talia matches up quite well against Young Pyromancer. Indeed it does. They don't. They aren't best friends. Uh, but we see a lightning bolt take out Italia. Yep. Um, also making a token, so we're happy. Uh, so Gustav is quite happy about that. If he has something like a ponder or a brainstorm to go with this as well, yeah, it would be, that, that, would be uh, that would be like pretty good since uh, Nicholas doesn't really have good ways to deal with multiple one-one creatures. No, exactly. Uh, so. Let's see what Nicholas will do for his turn. Well, he has his third land. I mean, that that opens up a number of plays for the for the Death and Taxes deck. You you, you must feel so tempted to just uh, okay. He boarded in his one Oblivion Ring as well. Yeah. Uh, he and yeah, just killing the Pyro Monster here is. Uh, he's he's really hoping for no spell pairs here. But then again, mm-hmm. I don't think Spell Pierce is a card you keep in this no, matchup. No, you can't afford to keep that uh, card. Like, if For- Force of Will and uh, Spell Pierce are the cards you bring out, right? Uh, or do you keep Forces in? I would probably keep Forces in. Oh. Uh, I think I would cut the Probe. Oh, yeah, the Probe. The probe, probe seems might... pretty bad. Yeah, it doesn't seem great. I, I you could actually make some like compromises. I don't think you want four forces. No, that's true. Uh, I, like keeping two forces mm-hmm. and like two probes, something along yeah, those lines. Yeah, that might be a good compromise. Yeah. Um, mm. But here we have the here true we name. have the true name, and we'll see. Does Nicholas have the council judgment, or else he is in for yet another close game where he has to put a really fast clock on uh, Gusta? Right. 
And I think I saw a number of Sarah Avengers in Nicholas's hand, and yeah, that is there, exactly what is coming mm-hmm. out here. Yeah, there's actually two Sarah Avengers in his hand, uh, paired with a uh, Revoker and a uh, Horizon Canopy. So, at the, and a Wasteland. Uh, so it's he's probably like deciding if he wants to port or revoke her. I think I like this play just passing and saving the revoker for when Gustav sort of decides which equipment he's going to get and then and then put the revoker on that equipment. Exactly. But I think that's a good I, play. I, I like that a lot more and just porting him even though uh, Gustav has uh, plenty of lands to work with. Yeah. Yeah, Lance is not a problem in this game, it seems. Uh, and he and he actually has the Stoneforge in hand, so he could just go for his equipment here, but I don't think he will be able to play it in the same turn. No. And and if not anything else, he won't be able to equip it, so... Mm. Okay, so he he plays a young pyromancer, it seems. If I am a small box, then. <laughs> uh, no, I won't. Uh, so yeah, and attacks in with uh, the true name nemesis and the uh, and the uh, elemental token after playing a lightning bolt and creating yet another one one elemental token. So I would say that uh, Gustav has a firm grasp of this game. Very dominant board position. Uh, Indeed. The only thing Nicholas can do is just play yet another Sarah Avenger, but uh, even if uh, Gustav would not have an answer to that, mm. Uh, it's still uh, the true name nemesis is still just attacking him and uh, wrecking. Yeah. So here we see a double wasteland on the white source. Yes. Uh, I think so. that's. Uh, I don't really know. I mean, I, I think Nicholas is just praying that this wrecks Gustav in yeah, some way. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that's your chance. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think there's much else you can do here. Like it. I, I don't, like you basically don't beat another spell at this point, like another mm. action spell at this right. point. Uh, so you just have to hope that she doesn't cast any for like mm. a couple of turns, and uh, and like even then, I'm not sure that you can actually win because this mm. board is just so dominant, especially with the true name in play. Mm. But uh, yeah, that that's the plan. But I'm very doubtful that it will actually work out. Right. And there were more um, cantrips from Gustav. Another ponder and another elemental. Like ponder wasn't a good, <laughs> good card <laughs> to begin really, with. Yeah, to begin with, like yeah. you, now you also get free uh, one one elemental tokens. Thanks, Pyro Monster. Mm. So I guess the best thing for. Niklas at this point. Is that uh, Jita, perhaps? Land, uh, play Jita, equip, attack? I, I'd, I'd say so, yes. Because if, if, to start with, he can uh, he can kill the Pyro Monster. Yeah. And then he can just start gaining life mm-hmm. and raise the... The true name. True name. So, uh, let's I see. mean, Council Judgment wouldn't be that bad either. Like, if... Uh, if you take out uh, true name out of the mm-hmm. equation, I think. Uh, yeah, then it's a lot more even, the board. Yes. So he has a second land, but it's a horizon canopy, and he chooses to draw a card. Oh. Is does that signalize like that he's desperate here? Yeah, 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 definitely. I mean, uh, especially since he only is on uh, three lands. Um. His deck could very well use that third or, or fourth mana, but instead he chooses that it's more important to draw a card. That seems quite desperate. I agree. We'll see what he comes up with, but mm. it's lo- it looks like uh, Gustav is about to st- 
I, I say steal a game mm -hmm. from the Death and Taxes player. Here, Phyrex and Roker comes. I don't really know what he wants to name with that, but... Yeah, I guess this is just a blind yeah. blind pick, or well, the card you're most afraid of, basically. Mm. Which, what do you think that is at this point? Uh, G2 or Sword of Fire Nice, perhaps? Yeah. I, I, I think so too. Uh, have we any word on what he named? No, I can ask. Uh, oh, wow. The Revoker named Is It Staticaster. Oh my god. That's, that. uh, that's uh, I think, a very good card for the Jeskai deck in this matchup. I agree. But it's not one Gustav is playing. That seems better than Electricery. Yeah. Or I'm not sure. It doesn't answer the turn one Mother of Runes, but it is, like, repeatable, and uh, it's <laughs> not like they have a lot of removal in the... Well, in a way, it is. Uh, I mean, it, it depends on how many, how many mother runes the death and taxes deck manages to put into play. But if there's yes. there's only one, you can flash it in at the end of their turn. Oh, shoot, exactly. Tap up, ping, ping it. Yeah. Oh, that's so, true. Uh, okay. Yeah, well, then I like the static caster a lot more than I like electricery. Yeah. Just like that. <laughs> I I made up my mind. Is the static caster is the boss? Uh, and it's a, it's a really good call by Nicholas to call it. Although he, we know that Gustav doesn't have it in right. his deck, but and I think he's also being a bit too clever here, because even if Gustav had the set static caster, he would not need to play it. <laughs> exactly. So uh... I, I I guess he just threw it down as a two one creature mm -hmm. there. The good old goblin piker in Legacy. Good old goblin. All right, so Nicholas is down to six unhealthy life points, it seems. Yeah, which staring down a bunch of elemental tokens. Uh, we really see that I don't think that Delver would have even been doing close to as much work mm -hmm. as Young Pyromancer has done this game. Right. Young Pyromancer has really won in this game, even mm -hmm. though... True name nemesis certainly helped. I think that true name nemesis. I think the young pyro monster is a true MVP. Mm. Yeah, uh, I agree. Um, he gets uh, Yeta here, but yeah, it's, he's just it's, dead it's on board. Like, what? Why would you? Far, yeah, he, he's dead. So by a landslide. Hoping against hope that Gustav doesn't see it, perhaps. <laughs> I, I mean, we have that is an ambitious guess. <laughs> yeah, but we have we have seen some crazy games. Here, oh so. yeah, yeah, <laughs> we, we have like you know, the, the games we casted today have been yeah. ridiculous in all sorts of shapes, ways, and forms. So let's see. But Gustav will have not have any of that. He will just turn him sideways. And... That's lethal. Right, if our life totals are correct. If he is at six life, that is certainly lethal. No, wait, what? Yeah, yeah, there, there are more creatures here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Nicholas scoops him up. It, and we go to 1-1. One, one. So do you think uh, Niklas is having second thoughts about his sideboarding here now that he has seen these young power monsters? I don't know. I've, I'd say that he should, but then again, like when you look at his sideboard, mm -hmm. you, you don't really find anything that is... No. Like you have the Sunlance that kills the power monster, mm -hmm. but then then the closest you get to like actually killing the power monster is like Cataclysm. And that's and, not a good uh, way. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But th that are the ways mm -hmm. you have to kill uh, the pyromancers in your sideboard. Yeah. Uh, there are actually just no other way. The, the, no. He, he brought in the Oblivion Ring, mm -hmm. which probably means he brought in the Sunlands. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, and the Council of Judgment mm -hmm. has to be there. Like I, there, I can't see a universe where it, where it isn't. No. No. And yeah, other than that, he like doesn't have any other ways. Uh, he has four swords in his main deck that can also mm -hmm. kill the pyro monster, but that's it. Uh, he, the removal department is quite thin. Indeed. But we'll see what they do. Uh, mm -hmm. do, do you think that uh, Gusta will change anything up? Or? Well, I, I, we didn't see any sideboard cards out of him, actually. So... Did, not a, even a single one? We actually did not. 
There might have been an electric in his hand that I missed, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I could have been. Like we're pretty sure that card is in any way. So yeah, no, I I think uh, I mean some I have seen some people being uh, thinking that, that that it's a good idea to bring in meddling mage in all kinds of matchups. That uh, sounds ambitious to say the yes. least. I mean, but um. So I mean, the, I but I think there is some universe where Gustav thinks that Melding Mage can be a playable card, or at least when it's better than some of his main deck cards. But yeah, I'm not sure I, I, the, I agree the, the with. The thing that. we already talked about how we probably want to cut some number of probes. I mm -hmm. uh, like don't want to cut probes and bring in Melding Mage. No, that's because true. those cards do have some sweet synergy with each other. But that, I mean, that's one plan he could go for. Say, cut the Force of Wills, bring in Melding Mages. Yeah, so, so certainly. Let's see. So, in let's uh, let's play with the thought of him bringing metal mages. Then he would will bring in two electricery and three metal mages, mm -hmm. and the one supreme verdict. Yeah. Uh, then I don't think he can bring in the council's judgment. The two council's judgments. No, that seems does. true. Uh, so that means he is bringing six cards. Mm -hmm. He cuts the four force of wills, mm -hmm. and uh, then he also cuts. Two spell pierces. Oh, the two spell pierces. So that matches so, up. Yeah, so it's actually a question about Council's Judgment and Meddling Mage. Like, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think any of them, like, they, like none of them sound amazing, so. No. Yeah. So I actually think it's quite close. Uh, you could bring in Meddling Mage, but yeah. Then again, like, I'm, yeah. I, I, I'm I, not a fan. <laughs> I, I know that I wouldn't do it, uh, like, for sure, but then again. Yeah. Uh, I, I, you never know what goes through their minds. There, yeah, that I, is a but, uh, I think there is a school of thought that thinks that, I mean, especially against decks like Death and Taxes and some um, uh, bug decks where they have a very limited amount of remo removal at their d disposal. So if you play a meddling mage on Swords of Plowshares, then you more or less know that this guy, that your guys are not going to die. Yeah, exactly, so, they're, they're there. And uh, that uh, might be a something he prioritizes. Yeah, I actually like that. Also, 2-2 two -two body is not worthless by any means. Mm -hmm. uh, we see them uh, with their starting hands here. I hope they both keep, because that we leads to the most interesting yeah, magic. Yeah, we want the good games. But no. And we didn't get as we wished. But uh, Niklas is taking a mulligan, which is probably, to be fair, uh, something that evens out the match up a little, mm -hmm. because... Uh, as you said, Nicholas is quite heavily favored. Yeah, I, I think he should be, especially on the uh, on the play here. Yes, um, I think he he can also afford himself to uh, uh, not keep that uh, shaky seven card hand and go for the better uh, six card hand, um, which you in general should do. Which I generally do not do. <laughs> we're, we're, we're from the same school then. <laughs> I, ah, yes, and that works. I, 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 I worked worse. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, you, you can be, be from the LSV school of thought mm -hmm. or the Martin Yusa school of thought. Yeah. Where it's commonly known that uh, uh, LSV very rarely mulligans, while Martin, <laughs> Martin Yusa like mulligans. All the, uh, time. <laughs> all the time. Like, well, this hand, it does have free lands, four spells, but I don't have a free drop. I ship it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, not really, but... You, Pretty close. Yeah, you get a point. <laughs> yeah. So Niklas kept his six, at least. That's good. That's good. That's that, good. That, that, I would say that's uh, close to perfect like yeah. uh, f f for the matchup. We see him porting on turn two, which is not... That's, I just, Looks like such a strong play on turn two, like even when, though, when you're on the play. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Like it, it doesn't like when you just say it. Yeah, he ported on turn two. It sounds so unimpressive. When mm -hmm. you actually see it, you're like, wow, that's that's good. Yeah, and, but he needs to follow this up with a third land, I think. Mm. Uh, yeah. Uh, one thing also, which is, is that's great, exactly that uh, Gustav is playing two basic. Mm -hmm. Is class to start off with? And uh, uh, protects him from the wasteland. Mm -hmm. uh, we see Niklas. Uh, I don't think he has a second uh, white sword in hand mm -hmm. from the lands he played. Right. I think you conceal. I think that you would conceal that you have a wasteland if mm -hmm. you had another land to play. 
Yeah, especially uh, when you're only facing uh, basics. Uh, also, I'm wondering what spells is in Nicholas' hand since uh, he didn't play anything uh, on his uh, turn two or three. Uh, right. I, I would I would assume that at least one of them are uh, uh, are Sarah Avenger, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, we actually got this spotter uh, have has given us some information. He actually has a Caracas as a land, mm -hmm. uh, and then Oblivion Ring, Sarah Avenger. A Stoneforge Mystic, which I opted not to play. Interesting. And uh, yeah, that's it. While uh, Gustav has the young pirate monster we also played uh, a Force of Will, a Ponder, a Batter Skull, another Force of Will, and a Dig for Time. Sounds like a pretty stacked hand, that. Yes, I'm surprised to see two Force of Wills. Like, uh, maybe that is just the two, and he got like quite unlucky to draw them both. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm quite surprised. But I, I think this was uh, Niklas's plan to sort of starve Gustav out with porting Wasteland and then to land up uh, Thalia on turn four. Certainly a good plan. Uh, but it didn't quite work out with that Junk Pyromancer because I think that forced Niklas to play something. I, I, exactly. Uh, so Talia, as we said earlier, matches up well against that. We see uh, we see a Stoneforge Mystic, probably from the top from Gustav, mm -hmm. uh, which makes it even ha harder for Nicholas to execute the game plan he yeah. was going for. Yeah, this really throws a wrench mm -hmm. in Nicholas's plans here. Yeah, especially since it's low on removal. The only removal he really has in hand at this time is uh, the Council's Judgment. Uh, he does have the Blubbing Ring and the Council's Judgment. But he is staring down two Force of Wills yeah. in uh, Gustav's and, uh, hand. And note that uh, those removal spells cost four now with yeah. Thalia in play. Yeah, right. Talia might do more damage than doing good at this moment. Mm. So it will be interesting to see how he chooses to progress here. Because he, he knows that now all his spells are uncounterable because Gustav tapped out. And yes, and Thalia is in play. Yeah, ex exactly. You, uh, at Force of Will is a free spell most of the time, but how it works is that uh, if Thalia is in play, you still have to pay one for it. Now Gustav will oblige Niklas with showing him free cards, but this should be stopped, please. Yes, they, this should not be happening. Right. Yes. Thank you. We, we, we see them correcting that immediately, otherwise we would have to run out and tell them to stop the game. Yeah. Or pause the game, I guess. Um, so yeah, we see him... Uh, so that that actually also tells us that Gustav actually fought the good force of will that turn. Yeah. Which makes this like super backbreaking, probably. Mm -hmm. And uh, you said that Gustav knows his deck, so that is... That is probably just something he did out of tiredness, mm -hmm. uh, which is super sad to see at uh, such a high record. Yeah. Mm. But this is something I which Niklas should be quite happy to see, I think. Gustav tapping out for a brainstorm main phase. Yeah, n now he realizes that he, he, such, he must answer that Talia because that, mm -hmm. is, that is really good right now. Tal Talia will be the MVP of this game if it goes in Nicholas' favor. Yeah, and I think uh, Gustav is digging for land here. Do you, did he find it? I don't know. It looks like a polluted delta. No, it's a tundra. A tundra. Maybe a polluted delta as well. I don't know. That but would be uh, ideal, of course. Exactly. And I think he has searched for this land to keep up the force. Yeah. But keeping up the force this turn is like awkward because he has searched after an equipment with mm -hmm. a... Stoneforge. And uh, Gustav did not put in an elemental token from that brainstorm. So, um, I, I suppose both these players are uh, slipping up on small things here and there uh, in this final game. Yes. Uh, oh, here we come with the elemental. Okay, so. Or no. Okay, no. Oh, he, he, he miss, miss, miss trigger. Like, yeah. It's it's up to Nicholas if he wants to give Gustav the token or not. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, R rules are rules. 
And that's a very good draw for Niklas, I think. Uh, keep uh, Gustav Lowe on mana. Just uh, waste that Tundra. Yeah, you, you can waste the Tundra, go into second main phase. You uh, can even swing with Thalia. Exactly. And uh, then uh, probably port on upkeep, I think. Yeah, that, that, that's great. You do have the board position at the moment. While uh, Gusta really needs to... Oh, he, he takes the aggressive route. Wow. Yeah, this is pretty aggressive. Yeah, but it makes sense. You know that there's nothing ex except jump blocking that uh, uh, that uh, Gustav can really do. Yeah, and, and, and uh, Gustav has to jump block with the Stoneforge. Exactly, because otherwise he has killed Pyro. And wh one thing that's even better about this play is that uh, you know that he has Jitta in hand, but mm -hmm. even if he plays a land, he can't play it and equip because Talia stops it. Right. But I think we'll see a source of power shares here on the Talia. But mm -hmm. it's not that bad either because he can just re equip to the Stoneforge Mystic and we really see how the Sword of Fire Nice is the MVP once again. Yep. Yeah, there is actually only four creatures in Gustav's deck that can block a creature equipped with Sword of Fire Nice. And, and that's Stoneforge Mystic. Yes. So Gustav swings and just passes the turn. Um. Yes, so uh, yes, so that uh, Nicholas can't like uh, he doesn't want to do it main phase because mm. he wants like the equipped creature to get removed. Right, but that will cost two mana, Gustav. Right. And uh, yeah, this this is a bit unfortunate for Niklas. He will have to return his Thalia with Krakas. Um, but he, yeah, he just replays it, wastes the Tundra, and just to keep Gustav. On the back foot in this game. Yes, uh, I think that uh, I think that Nicholas got this at this at this point. Yeah, because uh, I think Gustav just did not draw a third land. Yeah, if, if he would have like if he would hit his land drops, he could cast all those spells that are in his hand. Uh, there's still Italian play, so it's phase two for that ponder. He does get a one one elemental, <coughs> but a, a, as we said earlier, uh, young Pyromaster isn't best friends with uh, Father. Yeah, and the, he, the elemental tokens are not best friends with sort of fire nice. <laughs> that is also true. So, and and you, you know, <coughs> you know here as uh, Nicholas that if you want to equip the sort of fire mm. nice this turn, you will. Yeah, and uh, you know also know that if you want to attack and connect with it, you will. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. There is the young pyromancer, but I don't even know like uh, I, how, how much that does. It doesn't do much at this point. It's it's too late. He also drew the Umisawa's Ide. Oh, I, I, he can't shoot it down with Sword of Fire Nice. Yeah. And it, I'm, 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 it, it just keeps the young pyromancer alive, which we already stated doesn't do much. Right. So, um, um, he's considering us playing a Mother Bruins, which <coughs> I think is the correct play. And we'll just... And uh, Gustav will still try to force this, but that will not work. Oh, he forgot to draw a card. Uh, Niklas. Uh, oh, oh no! And uh, did uh, Niklas forget to draw a card? With no, the I, I think he. Drew, I think he drew. A okay, card. okay, but uh, did Gustav try to? Okay. No, you were, uh, he, he reached for the force of Ah, uh, yeah, you you always <laughs> like your forces costing one man mm -hmm. is painful. Like I, I feel his pain. I feel it. Yeah. And I think uh, yeah, this is yeah, but I mean at this point this is just more champ blockers. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, looking grim. And actually, uh, we just got informed that there, that is time in the round. Wow, we are coming to time once again. These feature matches are taking a super long time. They are. Been commentating nonstop. So now, <laughs> turn one of extra turns. So now. 
What do you do, as Nicholas here? Yeah, yeah. You, you have to end them as, mm -hmm. uh, as quick, quick as, as possible. possible yeah. So do you use the mother runes to give pro white to Thalia? To mm. get through? I think so, yes. You, you you just really want to connect every single turn now. It's it's yeah. It's six damage a turn if you want so. And that but, and, and uh, that, that is enough to kill on additional turns. Yeah, you can actually ping a, a creature this turn, mm -hmm. and then you can ping face twice. Yeah, and that should be lethal. But then again, you get disrupted by a lot of things here. But oh, uh, like a, a swords to blow shards or something. Oh, but he has a second port. It's, it still doesn't stop swords though, which is the problem. That's true. Yeah, so Niklas is just hoping that this uh, Thalia will go the distance. Yeah. And if it does, he will win the match. If it doesn't, this will be a draw. Because there's no way that uh, Gustav gets back in no. this game at this point. Absolutely none. So, is it right to in upkeep? Seems like it. He's floating mana. I yeah. I will assume. For a dig through time. And that one he actually only has to pay two mana for if he yeah, so chooses. Yeah, if he chooses to remove uh, seven cards from Delve. Yeah. That is a re very interesting interaction. But that's how it works. You wanted to make cost one less, remove one more card. So, what is Gustav hoping to find here? A land and a swords? I think so, yes. That's what he needs, because next turn will be too late. Because then the mother runes will be untapped. Oh, that is true. He needs it this so turn. So he needs it now. Did he find it? I, 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 like, I definitely see a and land. Actually a land that is a lightning bolt. A that land will not do it, because Niklas still has one port left. So Niklas can just uh, tap the planes in Gustav's draw step, for example. Hmm. And then Gustav can place one land, but... Wait, wait okay, we can't play his one land. Oh, yeah, right. But he, he chooses not to. Okay, that might... I think that... Yeah, that... Oh, but he has placed the... But he can't play the GT. Oh, sh oh God. Gustav... Uh, <laughs> Gustav doesn't like Talia. Oh, he should play more vintage, so then you learn these sphere effects. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes you do. Yeah, he's been sitting with those two Force of Will all game. Mm -hmm. And they've done they, nothing. They, this is the point where I tell you, yeah, I told you so. <laughs> you should cyborg him out. Just look at me. No, but I, I think it's reasonable, as you said, mm -hmm. to keep two in. Like, definitely. If if not anything else, like, that's something that can... Uh, uh, like you can get your opponent off guard mm -hmm. uh, with those and uh, like eke out an unexpected win if you have force at the right moment. Yeah. All yeah. right. So Nicholas puts in the Umasawa's GT and uh, seems to be. N now it's just game, isn't it? Like with mother rules. I uh, yeah, but I I think he's. Yeah, it should just be game. I'm not sure what he's wondering, thinking about here. But uh, yeah, he just comes in with the Stouffer's music as well. All right. Why not? Mm -hmm. So this is six damage to Gustav. Yep. And two tokens on the GT. Um, he is paying the face. Yeah, it has to be. Yeah. But 
<laughs> it looks like it has eight cards in the hand. <laughs> Still had all these. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they say in the business. A time run free. And port on upkeep. It is very likely that uh, Niklas X this one out in yeah. the final the round, round. <laughs> of the third game. Yes. Yeah, because I think what is what is Niklas perhaps worried about here? I think. Oh, a lightning bolt. On, in response to the port. On the oh, rooms. this allows him to uh, this allows him to top deck the to top deck the swords to plowshares. Mm. So, what do you do then? You 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 obviously activate mother runes in response. Yeah, you you have to give mother runes protection from red. Like if you give that protection from white, he can just do it on your turn. Hmm. That's the thing. But he chooses to protect Thalia. I don't think that's correct. Or well, no. Wait. No, no, no. I, I don't think that's correct. Like that being protected this turn. So you would you would have protected the mother runes? Yeah, because if 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 it if it gets worse to plowshares, he can just do it now. Yeah. And uh, like well, that way you still have the mother alive and that way you still have mother around. Your opponent is still mm -hmm. dead because they have Stoneforge Mystical yeah. Play that attacks for five. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, 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 that's actually correct. He he misplayed because he definitely has to win if he does that. Mm -hmm. Now he, your opponent can have Swords of Plowshares. Mm -hmm. He screwed up, but uh, I don't think that Gustav has it. So no. I think it's game over. Or is he just faking it? He's just, yeah, faking, yeah, it. He's yeah. just faking it. <laughs> Game over. Niklas Olsson Jausis takes it down 2-1. Wow, well, and you can see him being shaken yeah. by the, that tapping by Gustav. G Gustav got in his nerves. So <laughs> a small victory to Gustav there for... Uh... <laughs> for that move. Yeah, ex exactly. I, I approve. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that that was a that, that was a good match, a really close one actually, mm -hmm. and uh, some some great plays by both players. Yeah. Um, we are gonna since next round is coming up so soon, mm -hmm. we are just gonna take a quick break yeah. and uh, eat our lunch, <laughs> or at <laughs> least I am. <laughs> uh, I speak for myself, uh, and we will be back in a moment with uh, round six. Stay tuned.